Take a look at this. This is the new South China Mall as the world's largest shopping mall. And it is virtually deserted, a ghost mall. Countries all over the world spend millions and sometimes billions on several mega projects, but not all of them become successful. Some remain just concepts, while others fail once they come into existence. Want to know about these projects and why they became useless? Yeah. You, know, you look at it, there aren't that many people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this city also has a nickname called Ghost City. Here, we will showcase some of the most useless mega projects in the world. It happened just over one minute into flight. The Big Stink. Living in 1820s, London was a real challenge for architect Thomas Wilson, but not because of the weather or food. The real issue was the growing pile of unburied bodies with no space left to bury them. Starting from 1770, London experienced a major industrial boom, drawing more people to the city for work. With more people came more deaths, but the city didn't have enough graveyards for everyone. Wilson came up with a bold solution, a giant pyramid of death. He believed that by building vertically, they could fit the space of 1,000 acres of traditional graveyards into just 18 acres, accommodating up to 5 million bodies. His grand idea was a 90-story pyramid, similar in height to the Shard, which is now London's tallest building at 95 stories. Wilson's proposed structure would have been a massive granite pyramid with stairs leading up to an observatory at the top. However, the project was far too expensive, costing what would be around $789 million today. Plus, Londoners were understandably against the idea of a giant pyramid filled with bodies towering over the city. Instead, the city decided to privatize land for traditional graveyards. It wasn't as spectacular as Wilson's pyramid, but it was a much more practical solution. After all, having 5 million decomposing bodies in one place would have turned the big smoke into the big stink. Before we move on to the next one, check out this image. This was China's first concept for the DNA Tower, created in the late 1990s. Sadly, it didn't work out back then because the technology and resources just weren't there to make such an ambitious idea a reality. Capital Corruption when we plan to explore exciting cities, one place we will definitely avoid is Naypyidaw, the capital city of Myanmar. Despite being eight times bigger than New York City, Naypyidaw has less than one-eighth of New York's population. So, where did everyone go? The truth is, they were never there in the first place. Naypyidaw became the capital in 2005 after Myanmar's military government got worried that the former capital, Yangon, could be attacked from the sea. Although Naypyidaw is more centrally located, it's not exactly a great place to live. Spanning nearly 3,000 square miles, it has only one high school, very few shops, and almost no public transportation. Most businesses stayed in Yangon, making the new capital unappealing for relocation. The city's massive 20-lane highway often looks eerily empty, like a scene from a horror movie. Clearly, this city was built for the ruling elite rather than the general public. There are no public amenities, but there's a lavish 100-room presidential palace and a 31-building parliamentary complex. The entire project cost an estimated $4 billion, about 5% of Myanmar's annual GDP. This massive sum, funded by the public, created a city that serves no real purpose for its citizens, but strengthens the government's power. We certainly won't be visiting Naypyidaw anytime soon. New South China Mall Imagine a mall so massive that it could fit over 100 football fields inside it. This is the New South China Mall in Dongguan, China, which covers a staggering 7.1 million square feet of retail space. When it opened in 2005, it was billed as the world's largest shopping mall, expected to attract over 100,000 visitors daily. But instead of bustling crowds, it was met with eerie silence. The mall quickly earned its infamous nickname as the world's largest ghost mall. The developers spared no expense, including replicas of world-famous landmarks like the Arc de Triomphe and even a canal with gondolas. Despite this grand vision, the mall had a major flaw. It was built in a city with low disposable income and a lack of public transportation options. As a result, only 10% of the retail space was ever occupied. In recent years, there have been attempts to revitalize the mall by adding new attractions and tenants, but the place still remains largely deserted. 
it's a giant, empty reminder of the pitfalls of building big without considering who will actually use it. The New South China Mall stands as a testament to the dangers of prioritizing size and spectacle over practicality. Trans Sumatra Railway the idea of a 2,168-mile railway stretching across Sumatra, Indonesia's largest island, sounds like a fantastic plan for boosting connectivity, right? Enter the Trans-Sumatra Railway, a mega-project meant to revolutionize transportation on the island by connecting key cities and cutting down travel time. With an estimated cost of over $22 billion, this ambitious project was supposed to be a game-changer. However, more than a decade later, most of the railway remains incomplete. Environmental concerns, difficult terrain, and massive delays have turned this project into a classic case of biting off more than you can chew. In many areas, you can find tracks overgrown with vegetation and sections of the railway that look more like hiking trails than transportation routes. The project's feasibility has also come under question. Sumatra's road networks are still the dominant mode of transport, making the need for this railway uncertain. Despite ongoing efforts to complete it, the Trans-Sumatra Railway seems stuck in a never-ending construction phase, making it a classic example of a mega-project that might never fulfill its grand promises. For now, it remains a costly and unfinished venture, earning its place on the list of the world's most useless mega-projects. Costly Cruise Disaster As one famous poet once said, We like big boats and cannot lie. The boat in question here is the Costa Concordia, a massive cruise ship weighing 114,000 tons and measuring 950 feet in length. It could carry over 4,000 people and cost a whopping $570 million to build in 2006. But its operational life was cut short during a Mediterranean cruise in 2012 when it struck a rock near Tuscany, Italy, and partially capsized. Captain Francesco Chettino had diverted from the planned route to perform a sail-by salute, a maneuver where the ship sails close to shore. Overconfident in his navigation skills, he turned off the ship's computer guidance system before attempting the maneuver. Unfortunately, he spotted dangerous waves crashing over a reef too late and ordered a turn. The ship collided with an uncharted rock on the seabed, and despite the rescue team's efforts, 34 people lost their lives. The Costa Concordia's salvage operation took over two years and cost nearly $2 billion. It was towed about 200 miles to Genoa, where it was dismantled. With the amount spent on cleanup and compensation, nearly four new ships could have been built. This disaster is a stark reminder of the dangers of overconfidence and negligence in maritime navigation. The Giant Mac In recent years, the race to build advanced robots has really heated up, leading to some incredible, bizarre, and sometimes downright silly creations. One of the most over-the-top examples is the giant Gundam suit in Yokohama, Japan. This enormous robot is based on the RX-782 mech from the famous Gundam anime series. Standing at an impressive 59 feet tall, it has captured the imaginations of fans everywhere. Building a 25-ton robot as tall as three giraffes and getting it to move is no easy task. However, despite its intimidating appearance, this Gundam isn't quite ready to save the world from alien invasions like in the anime. Its movements are slow, limited to a few steps forward and a kneel, making it look more like a sluggish grandparent than a battle-ready mech. Essentially, it's more of a flashy tourist attraction than a functional robot. While the exact cost of the Yokohama Gundam isn't public, a similar statue in Tokyo that only moves its head cost around $100,000, Given that this Gundam can move its whole body, the price must be significantly higher. Though some may find it pointless, it's clear that fans love it. And if it brings joy, who are we to judge? The Hour of Power When we procrastinate, we might manage to get about 15 minutes of work done before getting distracted. But our lack of productivity is nothing compared to the epic failure of Japan's Manju nuclear power plant in Fukui Prefecture. Approved in 1983, this plant has produced only one hour of electricity in several decades. It takes us longer just to get ready in the morning. Manju was designed as a fast breeder reactor aiming to recycle used nuclear fuel and generate more energy. 
The concept looked promising on paper, but in reality, it was a disaster. Major faults were found in 14,000 components, including critical safety features. In 1995, a fire broke out, and the staff tried to cover it up by tampering with security footage. In 2010, a 3.3-ton refueling machine fell into the reactor vessel, causing so much damage it couldn't be removed from the top. Despite these issues, the plant continued limping along until the Fukushima disaster in 2011. The tsunami-triggered radiation leak turned public opinion against nuclear power, especially Monju, which had already cost the government $122 billion. In 2016, Manju was finally shut down, but its deconstruction, expected to take until 2047, will add another $3.4 billion to the bill. In total, this $15 billion project over 60 years turned out to be a monumental example of how not to run a nuclear facility. Ironically, it was named after a Buddhist deity of wisdom something sorely missing from its execution. Kangbashi District When China decided to build a brand new city from scratch in Ordos, they went big, really big. The Kangbashi District was planned to be a modern metropolis, capable of housing over one million residents. With state-of-the-art infrastructure, massive public squares, and futuristic architecture, it was set to be a shining example of China's rapid urban development. The investment? Over $1 billion. However, the people never showed up. The city remains largely vacant, with only a small fraction of the expected population living there. Rows of high-rise apartments stand empty, schools built for thousands have only a handful of students, and the streets are so quiet you can almost hear the tumbleweeds. The problem? The homes were priced far too high for the average Chinese citizen, making them unaffordable for most. Kangbashi has since become one of the most famous ghost cities in the world. The government has made various efforts to fill the city. Uh, this city also has a nickname called Ghost City. Including moving in government offices and offering incentives, but the vacant buildings and unused infrastructure remain a haunting reminder of what happens when supply overshoots demand. It's a ghost city born from ambition and misplaced expectations, standing as a symbol of China's overzealous urban planning. The never-ending crazy horse monument. Imagine having a giant statue erected in your honor. Sounds grand, right? Well, one monument in South Dakota aimed to do just that, but turned into a decades-long project. In 1939, Lakota chief Henry Standing Bear hired sculptor Korczak Ziolkowski, who had worked on Mount Rushmore, to carve a monument to Crazy Horse, a Native American hero. Of course I'm egotistical. I believe I can do it. I know I can do it. The plan was to create a massive statue 641 feet long and 563 feet high. However, fast forward to today and only Crazy Horse's face has been completed, which wasn't even finished until 1998, 50 years after the project started. Progress since then has been painfully slow. Ziolkowski's family took over the project after his death but showed less enthusiasm. Despite receiving millions in donations and tourism fees, little progress has been made. Adding to the controversy, the construction site was originally a sacred burial ground for the Lakota people, which means the project has desecrated the very land Crazy Horse fought to protect. What started as a tribute seems to have turned into a money-making venture for the Ziolkowski family. Ciudad Real Central Airport Imagine spending over $1.3 billion to build an airport so grand that it could handle 10 million passengers a year. Now, imagine it standing empty like a haunted set from a zombie apocalypse movie. Welcome to Ciudad Real Central Airport, Spain's ultimate mega-project flop nicknamed the Ghost Airport. Opened in 2009 with dreams of becoming a major hub for international flights, the airport had everything. A 13,000-foot runway designed for the biggest planes, state-of-the-art facilities, and a shiny new terminal. But there was one tiny problem. No airlines were interested.
The airport was located over 140 miles from Madrid, making it inconvenient for most travelers. It attracted so few passengers that by 2012, it had completely shut down, barely three years after its grand opening. The empty terminals and unused runways have become a stark reminder of poor planning and high hopes. Since then, the airport has been used as a filming location for movies and a parking lot for unused aircraft making it more useful for Hollywood than for actual flights. Despite several attempts to sell and revive it, Ciudad Real Central Airport remains largely abandoned, standing as a costly monument to wasted potential and unrealistic expectations. Ryugyong Hotel Standing tall like a giant ominous pyramid in the middle of Pyongyang, the Ryugyong Hotel is hard to miss, mostly because it's the tallest unoccupied building in the world. When construction started in 1987, the goal was to make it the world's tallest hotel with 105 floors. It was supposed to be a symbol of North Korea's economic prowess and modernity, but things didn't exactly go according to plan. The estimated cost for this mega project? A whopping $750 million, a colossal sum, especially for a country struggling with severe economic challenges. Construction was halted in the early 1990s when North Korea's economy crumbled, leaving the building as an empty concrete shell for nearly two decades. Fast forward to today, even though the exterior has been clad with glass and lights to make it look finished, the inside remains mostly vacant and unfinished. With no working electricity or plumbing, this 330-meter-tall Hotel of Doom is a hollow giant that serves as a stark reminder of the country's ambitious but unrealistic aspirations. Ironically, a structure meant to showcase luxury and success has instead become a global symbol of failure. The St. Francis Dam Disaster Talking all day can leave us incredibly thirsty, but imagine needing enough water for an entire city. Back in the 1900s, Los Angeles had this problem. They needed a massive water supply for their growing population. So, they hired a self-taught engineer, William Mulholland, to build the largest arch-supported dam in the world. Construction of the St. Francis Dam began in 1924 and was finished surprisingly quickly by 1926. It was over 700 feet long and 185 feet high, capable of holding more than 12 billion gallons of water. That's the same as 18,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. However, as the reservoir filled up, it became clear that Mulholland's experience wasn't enough. Many leaks appeared, which he dismissed as normal, but the dam's foundation couldn't handle the weight of all that water. On March 12, 1928, just days after reaching full capacity, the dam collapsed. In minutes, a massive 120-foot wave surged down, destroying everything in its path. This disaster became one of the worst engineering failures in U.S. history, killing at least 431 people and wiping out 1,000 homes. Although Mulholland wasn't charged with a crime, his career ended with this catastrophe. It was a tragic lesson for the engineering world. China's Empty Ghost City Ever wish we lived somewhere completely quiet and isolated? Well, there's a place like that in China, the Changyun International Project in Zhejiang. This 1,800-acre development was intended to be a luxurious super community. However, in 2014, the CEO of the construction company was arrested for bribery, leading to financial chaos and billions in debt. The company went bankrupt, and the government seized the project, leaving countless buyers out of pocket. Now, this sprawling city stands deserted, like a ghost town. The European-style buildings and statues look impressive from the outside, but inside, they're unfinished and abandoned. For instance, the mall is just an empty shell. While a company has shown interest in reviving the city, it would take a huge financial investment. It's a shame, because this place could have been an amazing place to live if it had succeeded. The controversial bridge no one uses Traffic can be a nightmare, so why not invent a teleporter, right? Well, China might have created the next best thing, or at least they tried. The Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge, or HZMB, cuts travel time between these three major cities from four hours to just 30 minutes. Stretching over 34 miles, it's the longest sea crossing in the world. Impressive, right? But there's a problem. Hardly anyone uses it. 
To cross the bridge, we need a special permit that's almost impossible to get. Only top investors, academics, politicians, and philanthropists qualify. Even then, only 400 permits are given out daily. Many believe the strict permit rules are to control traffic in overcrowded Hong Kong. But if that's true, why spend almost $19 billion in nine years building a bridge that most people can't use? It's a puzzling situation that raises many questions about the real purpose of this project. Hawaii's Road to Nowhere Hawaii is known for its breathtaking beaches and lush landscapes, but among its beauty lies a controversial eyesore the H3 Interstate. Despite its name, this interstate is just 15 miles long and doesn't connect to any other states. Hawaii is an isolated island chain after all. The interstate label simply means it was funded by the federal government. Construction of H3 started in 1989 and took eight years to complete, finally opening in 1997. However, the project faced fierce opposition because it threatened sacred sites important to native Hawaiians. Protests erupted, but the project was legally approved and the road was built. It ended up costing a whopping $1.3 billion or about $80 million per mile. Many locals still avoid driving on H3, believing it to be cursed by spirits due to the destruction of sacred sites during its construction. Now, it stands as a costly, underused road a stark reminder of a mismanaged project. If we ever take a drive on H3, we might want to check our back seat for any unexpected supernatural passengers. For many, this road truly feels like a highway to nowhere. Silent Stadium With over 3.5 billion fans, soccer is the world's most popular sport. So when Brazil hosted the World Cup in 2014, they built several new stadiums to impress. However, the Arena de Amazonia, located deep in the Amazon rainforest in Manaus, might have been the most impractical choice. There are no roads connecting Manaus to the coast, where construction materials had to be delivered. Everything had to be shipped up the Amazon River, making the costs skyrocket. During construction, the intense heat caused the grass on the field to turn brown and die so the organizers painted it green instead. After the World Cup, the stadium became a ghost venue. The local team, National, plays in the fifth tier of Brazilian soccer, rarely drawing more than 3,000 fans in a stadium that seats 44,300. Occasionally, the arena hosts Christian concerts, but they never fill the seats. It stands as a stark reminder of misallocated resources and poor planning, a costly unused monument in the middle of the rainforest the wall that didn't work. Whether we support or criticize President Donald Trump, one of his key campaign promises didn't turn out as planned, the reinforced border wall between the US and Mexico. Trump promised a massive 1,000 mile long concrete barrier and claimed that Mexico would pay for it, with costs estimated between $8 billion and $122 billion. However, reality played out differently. The border wall currently stretches only 450 miles, less than half of what was promised. And out of that, only 47 miles are new. The rest are just old segments reinforced with steel bars. Videos show people easily climbing over the new sections, while others are so low they can be crossed on foot. Some parts of the wall were built so poorly that they're already showing signs of instability. So far, the project has cost $15 billion, averaging about $32 million per new mile. Estimates suggest that maintenance could reach up to $28 billion annually. As for Mexico footing the bill, they haven't paid a single cent. Every dollar has come from U.S. taxpayers, making this one costly disappointment. It's like when our date orders a pricey steak and then forgets their wallet, leaving us to pick up the tab. Challenger Tragedy Today, people with enough money can literally fly into space. However, our journey to explore the cosmos has faced some devastating setbacks. One of the biggest tragedies happened in 1986 when NASA's Challenger shuttle exploded just 73 seconds after liftoff, killing all seven crew members on board. The shuttle was designed to last for 10 years, but had only been in service for three. The disaster was caused by a malfunction of the O-rings in the right-hand rocket booster. 
These small rubber rings were supposed to create a tight seal to contain the pressure from burning rocket fuel. On the day of the launch, freezing temperatures made the O-rings too stiff to seal properly. As the rocket launched, flames burned through the booster wall, breaking it away from the external fuel tank. This rupture released flammable liquid hydrogen and oxygen, igniting the entire shuttle. Engineers had spotted flaws in the rocket boosters as early as 1977 and warned against launching in cold weather. Unfortunately, their concerns were ignored, leading to this tragic accident. The space shuttle program was put on hold for three years afterward. In today's money, the total cost of building the Challenger and dealing with the aftermath is estimated at $15 billion. It's one of the most expensive and heartbreaking errors in the history of space exploration. Block flop. Buying our first home can be stressful, but if we had purchased one in the Lotus Riverside project in Shanghai, it would have been a complete disaster. On June 27, 2009, one of the 11 apartment blocks, each 13 stories high, toppled over onto its side. Luckily, no residents had moved in yet, but sadly a worker inside retrieving tools lost his life. The collapse happened because the construction team dug a pit for an underground garage on one side while piling the excavated dirt on the opposite side. This huge mound of dirt caused the ground beneath the building to become unstable, putting immense pressure on the concrete foundations. The foundations snapped under the strain, causing the entire building to fall over. Although the other 10 blocks were unharmed, the collapse terrified the 400 apartment owners, who quickly demanded their money back. The developers faced nearly $2 million in damages and an additional $3 million for cleanup. This incident became one of the most expensive construction blunders in history. The Ghostly Castle Town of Turkey Picture this, a valley filled with hundreds of identical mini castles, each looking like it was plucked straight from a Disney fairy tale. This is Burj Al Babas, an ambitious $200 million luxury real estate project in Turkey designed to attract wealthy investors from around the globe. The developers envisioned it as a dream retreat, where the ultra-rich could live out their fairy tale fantasies in a serene, picturesque setting. But instead of becoming a bustling luxury neighborhood, the place ended up looking more like an eerie, abandoned movie set. Halfway through construction, the project hit a major roadblock. The developer filed for bankruptcy. With no buyers and no funds to continue, the once promising venture was left in ruins. Now, over 500 empty castles stand in rows, eerily silent and unoccupied, like a haunted ghost town frozen in time. The sight of these identical, unfinished castles, complete with pointed turrets and gothic arches, has turned Burj Al Babas into a surreal tourist attraction. Visitors come not to buy homes, but to take photos of the bizarre, fairy tale gone wrong landscape. What was meant to be a glamorous getaway has instead become a cautionary tale about the dangers of building without demand. Coastland to Ghostland We've been trying to live more sustainably by recycling and donating items, but Malaysia's attempt at sustainability with the Forest City Project has faced massive hurdles. Launched in 2006, this ambitious plan aimed to create a futuristic urban paradise on four artificial islands off Johor's coast. The project promised car-free roads, smart apartments, and lush green towers. Despite the grand opening in 2016, the reality has been disappointing. By 2019, only 15,000 units were sold, far from the target of 700,000 units, with just about 500 residents actually living there, turning it into a ghost town. The project aimed to attract upper-middle-class Chinese buyers, but China's government imposed a yearly spending cap of $50,000 on foreign purchases. Combined with the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and political instability in Malaysia, Forest City struggled to find residents. The high prices with basic apartments costing nearly $100,000, while the average Malaysian salary is under $11,000, made it unaffordable for locals. The construction also damaged protected wetlands, contradicting its environmental goals. The project has become a $100 billion urban planning disaster, with tacky plastic animals scattered around, 
adding to the eerie vibe. It's no surprise the place feels haunted and empty. Maputo Katembe Bridge Maputo Katembe Bridge is the longest suspension cross sea bridge in Mozambique. Stretching across three kilometers of water, the Maputo Katembe Bridge in Mozambique is a sight to behold. As Africa's longest suspension bridge, it was built to connect the capital, Maputo, with the town of Katembe, dramatically cutting travel time and boosting economic activity, or at least, that was the plan. The project cost a staggering $785 million with hopes of transforming the region's connectivity and development, but instead of bustling traffic, the bridge sees barely any cars. The main issue? The high toll fees make it unaffordable for most locals, who prefer to take the cheaper, albeit longer, ferry routes. On top of that, the poor road conditions leading to the bridge discourage drivers from using it. The result is a massive, shiny bridge standing nearly empty, a stark contrast to the expectations of heavy traffic and economic growth. Critics argue that the funds could have been better spent on more pressing infrastructure needs like improving basic roads, schools, or healthcare facilities. Instead, Mozambique ended up with a costly bridge that looks impressive but serves very little practical purpose. It's a classic case of style over substance, where a flashy megaproject failed to meet the everyday needs of the people it was supposed to benefit. Qatar's Costly Ghost Town Picture this a city straight out of a futuristic dream, where sleek glass towers touch the sky and luxury yachts float along pristine artificial marinas. Welcome to Lusail City, Qatar's bold $45 billion gamble, positioned just a stone's throw away from Doha. The plan was to build a shimmering new metropolis complete with high-end shopping districts, state-of-the-art sports arenas, and even a floating island or two for good measure. It was envisioned as a paradise for the wealthy elite, where every street would be a catwalk of high-end fashion, and every corner would hum with the buzz of affluent socialites. But here's the kicker. This city that was designed to dazzle and awe is practically empty. You'd expect throngs of people living it up, but Lucille's apartments and commercial spaces are like a scene from an apocalyptic movie, completely deserted. The problem? Astronomical property prices have priced out most potential residents. The average Qatari family couldn't afford to buy a slice of this luxury, let alone sustain the lifestyle it promotes. Moreover, Qatar's construction boom has flooded the market with so many high-end projects that Lusail City got lost in the sea of glitzy developments. Today, you can take a leisurely stroll down its immaculate empty streets without bumping into a single soul. The malls filled with high-end brands have more staff than shoppers. Even the futuristic tram system designed to whisk passengers from one end of the city to the other runs with hardly anyone on board. It's like Qatar built a giant shiny set piece for a sci-fi film that never got released. What was supposed to be a jewel in Qatar's crown has become a glaring example of poor foresight, showing that building luxury doesn't automatically bring in the crowds. Instead, Lusail City stands as a glittering, yet hollow testament to the perils of unchecked ambition. That's all for today. Which one of these mega projects do you think should have been a no-go from the start? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and thanks for watching.